So my wife tells me that the vanity sink in the bathroom is draining slow and so is one in the kitchen and that does not make her happy. And if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. Got it. Luckily these are easy fixes, so let's get it done. First, a real quick lesson on the name of the parts that we're going to be dealing with under the sink here. Uh, this metal strap that's coming out is called the clevis. This is attaches it to the operating uh, mechanism on top of the sink, so you can move the stopper in and out. The clevis is attached with a spring clip right here. It's just a piece of metal that's springy with two holes in it. Uh, this attaches it. This attaches the clevis to the operating rod or connector rod, uh, and this is held into the sink. Um, into the stopper uh, with this retaining nut. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Given the spring clip a squeeze, we'll slide it down the operating arm along with the clevis. We might take a little coaxing, but we get it off of there. And with that free, um, you can kind of see how this operating arm swings up and down when you, the clevis pulls it or pushes it because it's connected to the operating mechanism on the top. We'll take the retaining nut off. This should only be hand tight. Yours may not be. You may need a pair of pliers, but I've done this several times in the past, so it comes off pretty easy. And then we'll pull this free, and you can see the nylon ball that sits inside the nylon bushing inside the hole right here uh, that makes the watertight seal. Overall, not rocket surgery. With the operating rod removed, we can come topside and just pull the stopper out. And as we pull this out, you can kind of see the hair come with. It's a little bit of hair. You can kind of see how gross and nasty this thing is. We'll have to scrub it before we put it back in. And then look at all that hair down there. I think we know why this is draining slow. Now comes the most glamorous part of this job, cleaning out the hair and, and gook that's in here. You can use one of those pipe cleaner things that they sell at the Home Depot or wherever. You can use a, a, a coat hanger that's got a little bend in it. Uh, I just happen to have this very long pair of needle nose pliers uh, that is perfect for this type of work. You can tell. Uh, they're kind of rusty. This isn't the first time going down a drain, uh, but they're perfect with this kind of stuff because you can really get a hold of some stuff and pull it out. Some of the stuff is really stuck to the side of the pipe, so it takes a little um, takes a little effort to pull it out. The soap scum and the hair uh, sticks this all to the side of this pipe, and um, sometimes it takes a little persuasion uh, to get it out of there. I'll get this one last stubborn clump of hair and yuck out of here and then I think that this drain is fairly clean. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my thumb over the hole that the operating tube came out of so water doesn't come out of it. And I'm going to run the water um, and I'm going to scrub this out. I'm using an old toothbrush to scrub this out but you can use a similar kind of brush or something similar. Uh, old toothbrushes are great for this kind of dirty work. Uh, whenever I have a toothbrush that's ready to be replaced, I throw it in my toolbox just for this kind of stuff. But I'll go around each side to make sure that the p entire pipe is clean, uh, and then we'll take a look inside. Here's a quick shot of the stuff that came out of the sink, not very appetizing. And now we'll take the snake cam, that's right, the snake cam, and we'll take a look down the drain just to see what it looks like in there. You can see near the top here it looks pretty clean. Um, I've got my flashlight shining in the hole that the operating rod goes in and uh, you can see on the side of the pipe is pretty textured and rough. It's easy to understand how soap and hair can get caught on that and build up and then cause the drain to slow and then need to be cleaned just like we just did. Here's a close up uh, a little further down the pipe. You can see the uh, it's fairly clean uh, but still rough. Uh, this will probably happen again in the future uh, like it's happened many times in the past. but. Luckily, it's an easy fix and now you know how to do it. Let's get this thing put back together. You can see how um, when these are lined up in the pipe, the stopper is going to be down, then the operating rod goes in and goes through this hole, and then as you move the lever up and down, it moves the stopper up and down. Pretty simple. Let's get them into the pipe and lined up. Here's a snake cam view of the operator stuck through the pipe. You can see how when the, I move the arm up and down, this end goes up and down, and since it'll go through that little ring on the stopper, the stopper goes up and down. And then we'll take a view of inside of the pipe. You can see where the stopper is. This is the operator's home. That's its home. That hole right there. That's what we're aiming for. We need to get it in that. That's its home. Why didn't you just go home? That's your home! 
Are you too good for your home? Answer me! Now it's time to put all this back together. We'll take the stopper um, that we have cleaned uh, with the old toothbrush and got all the gunk off of it. Um, you can see how much better this looks than it did before. And we'll stick this in the pipe so that it lines up so that the, the operating rod, when it goes in, it can find its home. Uh, put this in there and then we'll just give this a quick check to make sure that it's actually in there and it's moving the stopper up and down and it is so I'm happy with that so we'll take the retaining nut slide the retaining nut down the operating rod and we'll tighten this down just hand tight no gorilla here just hand tight we'll give it a, a tighten my hand and make sure it still operates freely yep still moves up and down still moving the stopper uh, everything seems to work like it should Next we'll take the spring clip and we'll slide it on just one hole because we're going to put the clevis in between the two holes. So spring clip, clevis slides on and we'll give the spring clip a squeeze and slide the other hole on and that's all there is to it. It's on. It's pretty secure. You can squeeze this and slide it up and down if you need to make some adjustments later. Um, when I took this off it was on the bottom hole. I put it back on on the second hole just to give me a little more, uh, just to change the range of motion. Now I'm doing a check to make sure that uh, when I move the operator on the sink up and down, that it moves the stopper up and down, the, uh, you know, adequately. We'll do a little tweak here, and uh, we're gonna call this done. Moving on to the kitchen, the first thing we gotta do is get all this junk out of here. Underneath your sink may be spotless, but underneath my sink looks like it belongs on the episode of Hoarders. So let's get this clear. And then we'll throw some old Tupperware under here to catch whatever water and mess and gook and who knows what else is going to come out of this trap when we get this plug off. The the P-trap or the U-bend like here with the drain plug is, is a pretty common offender. So this is usually the first place I go when this sink is draining slow. A coffee and scouring powder and stuff gets caught up in here and it kind of clogs it up. Uh, so this is usually my go-to when this sink is draining slow. I'm kind of taking it easy when I take this plug off because I'm not sure how nasty and how much water is trapped in here and I'd rather not wear whatever comes out of this hole if it comes shooting out of here violently. But this seems to be uh, pretty slow. It doesn't look like the water is coming out with much force and it actually looks like it's running pretty clear. So th this may be one of the times where this trap is not our problem. Uh, but we're going to take it out, take it off and take a look around and uh, see what's going on in here anyway. Yep, that water is clear and not a whole lot came out when we got that plug off. So this may not be it. We'll let this finish training and then we'll move the Tupperware out of the way. We'll see what we can feel up in here. Give this a little pat down and then I don't feel anything right here. And oh, I feel some um, scouring powder. There's like a plug of scouring powder. It feels like gritty, sandy powder that's stuck in there. But Although there was scouring powder up in there, it wasn't as much as I was expecting. It wasn't enough to really be causing our slow drainage problem. That means we need to keep looking and see if we can figure out why this is draining so slow. First we'll take this Tupperware full of scouring powder and yucky water and we'll go dump this in the utility sink and then we'll take a look with the snake cam. Alright, we got the snake cam and we're going to go up through the hole that the drain plug came out of. So we're looking in the U-bend. We'll get the snake cam up here and we'll first we'll look up this side. You can kind of see some of the scouring powder hanging around this joint, you know, where there's a, a surface for it to grab onto. I can still see a little powder up there. And then we look up this side and this is the other side of the U-Bend. And that hole towards the bottom of the screen goes to the other sink basin and straight up where there's a little bitty piece of copper light coming through uh, this should be looking out of the basin directly above the u-bend and uh, light should be pouring through here and it's not uh, so that looks like a big plug of scouring powder uh, up near the end of the tailpiece let's take a look at this plug from the top side view put the snake cam down the center of the drain and right away you can see how clogged up this pipe is this pipe is probably 90 95 percent clogged up just that little space to the left a little black circle on the left of the screen, that's the only place the water's got to flow down this down this drain. No wonder this basin is draining slow. You can see this giant clog of scouring powder and whatever else it's caught over its time uh, slowing down the drain and this is pretty gross. We'll see if we can get this clean We're gonna, or bust this clog up. This is just one of those spring-loaded little grabbers uh, for retrieving stuff that you've dropped and it just happens to fit down the drain and 
I'm going to see if I can get the snake cam beside it. And I'm going to get these claws, get these claws to, to flex out and then kind of use it like a little rotor rooter and bust up this little plug of scouring powder and Lord knows what. And it goes through it pretty easy. And I'll tell you what, as soon as I bust this plug up a little bit, man, the smell from this starts to come up the drain. This is not, this is not a pleasant smell. This tool is making pretty easy work of this claw, of this clod of mess. And with the, the grabber flexed all the way out, it does a good job of clearing this drain out. So we're just going to, I'm just going to run this up and down this pipe right here for a few seconds and it should clear all this mess up. While I was off dumping the dirty water and cleaning the tools, the inspector came by to see how things were going. I put the Tupperware back under the drain hole because uh, I wanted to run some fresh water down through each basin and down through the drain just to make sure that anything that could possibly be left over, some leftover um, scouring powder or anything else that I busted free while I was cleaning out the drain, make sure that was go ahead and clear the pipe so it didn't settle in the U-bend later. So we'll go ahead and get this flushed out. That only took a moment and then this water was running fresh and clear. So just to make sure nothing got caught up in there, I did one last little check with my finger, make sure I couldn't feel anything up in there. The U-bend feels nice and clean, so I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the drain plug. At first, I'm just going to put this plug on uh, finger tight. I'm just trying to get it to stop dripping so I can do a little cleanup underneath here. Uh, once I get it as tight as I can with my fingers and the dripping stops, I'll move the Tupperware container out of the way. And I'll take my paper towel and try and clean up a little bit of the mess that I've made. I'll clean it up better in a minute. And then I'll take the crescent wrench and I'll just put a few turns on this. I'm just trying to go for snug. I'm not trying to put any grunts into this. Just, just snug. No gorilla. Just enough to seat that O-ring and make it to stop. So afterwards, I, um, when it was all said and done, I put a little bit of Drano uh, down here and let it sit. Uh, and then I flushed out with some hot water and you can see the difference here. This pipe looks spotless. It's clear. The water down there is clear. Um, so the, uh, the mechanical scrubbing with the clean out tool and some Drano afterwards and this drain looks good as new. As always, thanks for watching and I hope you found this video helpful or at least interesting and be sure to check back soon because there'll be another project video before too long because when you're a dad and a homeowner it's always something.